and always a reminder for myself, I'm abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah this reality in this path is like a fine thread and has to be described by Ahlul Basira for they taught the reality, they saw the reality and Allah burned its haqqaiq into their soul. And each reality has its higher darajats and an infinite journey towards the Lord of Power. The door of this reality, there are two doors, one in which you approach to Divine, you think of yourself as something and that you want to know about your somethingness. You begin to read religious text and it's a dialogue between you and your Lord and you'll pursue that way of thinking and you drift some slow, some fast, farther and farther and farther away from the haqqaiq. Arifin are knowers, Marifa are the arifin of the Muhammadan, the mim reality. This whole existence is the secret of mim. Bin Ahad wa Ahmad is mim. Between the difference of Allah's ahadiyya and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad al Mustafa, Nabi Ahmad is in the secret of mim. So when Allah came by all their struggles, they come back into this world and they guide. And they guide people through a different door. And they say the secret of reaching realities because they are the people of realities. The secret of reaching a reality and that Allah inspire you to come on this journey is that negate yourself at this door. La anta subhanika inni kuntum minad dhalimeen. Glory be to Allah for I am an oppressor to myself. So write on your paper, I'm coming through the door of an oppressor. Myself has caused all the problems. So the du'a of an oppressor is not accepted, right? So you don't have to worry about making du'as to Allah It answers many of your questions. Different belief of different people, that's why then read the du'as of the Sultan al-Awliya, never about themselves and their importance and why, 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 why. But their wording is astonishing, Ya Rabbi I'm coming through the door of kufr, I'm coming through the door of belief and disbelief, I choose to come through the door of disbelief. Who am I to say what I believe and was correct, what I did was correct, I'm coming negating myself that I don't think I did anything right. I'm an oppressor to myself, I know my bad characteristics, deflate yourself before Allah deflates you. The one who went through the other door is inflating themselves, continuously thinking about their importance, their relationship with Allah They end up in an orbit outside. If you write a visual like there's a circle which is Muhammadun Rasulullah there's like a sun 
which represents Allah they're like a different planet, thinking about themselves and their relationship to Allah. And they want to know everything about themselves, their du'as, all everything, it's like a different orbit. They're asking us, no, no, the tariqah comes and teaches you that you're an oppressor to yourself. You accept to be nothing. If you're nothing, then you're nothing. Do you understand that? If you're nothing, and coming through the door of nothingness, you're nothing. So why are you worried about how you should pray and how you should act and how you should talk and how is this dialogue between and what happens here and what happens there? It answers all your questions. In your nothingness, the real power is to be nothing. In your nothingness, you enter into the ocean of everythingness. The other one will become and think themselves of something but you're looking from the outside and watching, oh this thing is, is not in the orbit of Muhammadun Rasulullah. It's growing itself thinking it's something but it actually entered into the ocean of having no value with Allah The one who came into the ocean of haqqaiqs and entered the door I'm a dhalim, I'm nothing, glory be to you Ya Rabbi. Then the awliya came and taught, you're just a, a cell, like a epsilon, a dot in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah If they understood that, all these teachings will begin to make sense. If you didn't understand the door then all this teaching will be very confusing to you. So when you're nothing, you're reading Qur'an, this is not about Allah talking to you because you're nothing and you're no one, you're non-existent. Sounds kind of harsh, we apologize but this is… The reality of, of you have to annihilate yourself. It's not me, it's not Allah talking to me, it's not me about finding myself, Ya Rabbi I didn't want to know more about myself and my nafs and, and all, all the things I think I am. I accept it to be nothing. I wanted to find the reality and the haqqaiq and the awliya come and said, then this Qur'an, Holy Qur'an is a dialogue between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and has nothing to do with you. If you read it as a bystander, this is a dialogue of the intimate relationship that Allah is giving to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and all its fires and realities will open. If this is about me and Allah I've negated my imam, I made myself to have an importance and an existence and that's the opposite of fana and becomes Ananiyah which was the madhab of shaitan. The belief of shaitan was that worshipping Allah worshipping Allah thinking that he's approaching Allah Allah wanted to calm that reality down, said, by the way I have a khalifa. So don't, don't think you're coming so fast, so hard. I have a khalifa. Now understand that this khalifa told all the angels to go behind the khalifa. So Allah Sayyidina Adam and now angels behind and jinn. Allah gave the knowledge to Sayyidina Adam as salam and no one saw Allah And the isharat came to Sayyidina Adam tell them these knowledges. As a result of the knowledges that were coming, they knew this as a Divinely source. This is not a knowledge they understood and as a result of this knowledge Allah gave a command 
to all those behind the imam, bow down to your imam. They were behind, they weren't facing Allah because that wouldn't be a big challenge for them. They were behind Sayyidina Adam and they had never understood how they can bow to anything other than Allah And Allah wanted to show the ihtiram and the reality of the Khalifa and what this form represents, the light and majesty of the Muhammadan reality that it will carry and bow down for your ihtiram and respect. Malaika immediately down into sujood except shaitan stood and the shaitans who followed him said, nope we will never bow down. This became their madhab, this became their belief that between them and Allah is nothing. And as a result they cast out of that orbit of haqqaiq because now they found themselves to be separate in their reality and connection with Allah Malaika given their haqqaiqs that you're in this orbit, you show its ihtiram and you show its respect. So then that belief for people who leave the orbit and they find that they want to find their way to Allah is how shaitan keep playing with them and trying to fool with them. The way of haqqaiq is, I'm nothing, I accepted my nothingness, I'm deflating myself. When I deflate myself then awliya come and says, if you're deflating you're then but a drop in this ocean and in this soul. And that's why we gave the holy verse of Qur'an. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانُ فَالنَّفْسَ wahid. We created you from one soul and you are but a drop from that soul. So don't identify yourself and try to find yourself outside of that ocean. You're like trying to take Allah's describing, I created you from a nafs al-wahid, one ocean. This ocean called Muhammadun Rasulullah Which has more power, this ocean or this little guy who's a drop? And the drop thinks he's everything and actually the drop has absolutely no power, it's so cut off. No matter how much shaitan wants to play with the mind it doesn't matter, this drop is cut off, it has no power. But what awliya found? And that's why you go back to all taskiyatul awliya that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Oh wow, when they entered into that they became everything. When they came and said, Ana al-haq, how he could say Ana al-haq? How awliya they spoke like this because they went into a hall and from this ocean they realized they can reach everywhere, they feel everything, they're connected to everything. And la shariq, it's not Allah don't make partner with Allah because he understood the haqq is the haqq of Sayyidina Muhammad Taseen, the most purified secret of Allah this ocean. Not Allah there's no wali who would ever say they're Allah and become uh, um, uh, they broke the whole usul. But they realize in, in losing their form, annihilating themselves they are nothing. In their nothingness they deflated to their binary code of nothingness and Allah began to open for them, you are now in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and your ma'rifah and your way of Gnosticism is to increase your love for Sayyidina Muhammad Fiikum that that reality is within you and you are within it, minhi wa minhum. He comes from me and I come from him. These are the big lights of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet was teaching them, before you hurt this Ahlul Bayt, know that minhi, that he came from me, he's a drop from me. 
I see through his drop, I feel through his drop, I hear through his drop, I speak through his drop. That drop talking to you now is from Muhammadun Rasulullah He's from me and if you love him you'll see that I'm from him. The drop is from Prophet When you cherish and love and respect that drop, what then Prophet described? And I'm from him, means I'm manifesting in that drop because that drop came and submitted, acknowledged its nothingness and became in our ocean of oneness, became one in my ocean of reality. It lost its identity, gave back its trust, gave back its will, gave back its, its entire existence to be nothing. As a result that drop became a drop from Muhammadun Rasulullah So when that drop now moves on this earth and that's what Allah is describing now, these are fiqum. This gul, gul e yastan, gul e gulistan, the gul of the roses, they're from the garden of Sayyidina Muhammad this drop is a rose from the garden of Sayyidina Muhammad They represent that light. As a result Prophet appears through them, appears through that light. It carries its fragrance, its light, its teachings, its love. The more they annihilate the more it appears and that's the only appearance that counts. Not to worry about yourself and who you are and your relationship with Allah, oh you went way outside of the ocean of fana. You became in the ocean of wondering about yourself. If you were nothing, no one absolutely trying to make your reality to die, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Then you understood all the tazkiyat al awliya and they're suffering, suffering, suffering. As much as shaitan wanted to build them, they negated themselves and nothing. As a result Allah something began to manifest in them. And the only something for Allah is Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result they had a value with Allah because Allah loves Prophet As a result they become Gulul Muhammadi and as a result Allah loves them. Qulini kuntum Allah fattabiyuni Their whole life was fattabiyuni to follow, if you follow you're no one. How can you follow with your own opinion? With your own… so that means qadam. Sahabi they walk where Prophet walked. When he was physically not with them they walked in the exact same space because they could see the light. They didn't go in different direction, they said, we walk where he walks, we are non-existent, we want to exist within him, I swear by the one whom carries my soul in his hand. Sayyidina Abu Bakr's hadith swears by the one whom carries his soul in his hand. They witnessed that their soul is carried by Sayyidina Muhammad Marifa is that you're nothing. If you are nothing you're in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah, fatabiyuni. Then what Allah gives you? Ya hibukumullah. Because you begin to vanish, your shaykh begins to vanish and what begins to manifest is Muhammadun Rasulullah on you. And every dress that comes to you, every blessing that comes to you is now you're understanding the worshipping of La ilaha illallah where you didn't understand before but you don't cut the rasul out, you're in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Understanding what now? The real reality of La ilaha illallah that even Prophet so can give you to witness. We explained with the huruf, when you write Rasul Allah that in the reality of Rasul 
is the reality of Allah. For you to witness is the only way to witness in the heart of Prophet To lose our existence, become non-existent and then the mirage begins. As much as you're approaching with the love and how to approach with this love is through the salawat, the durood, the apps, all of these practices they're giving is to reach the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad good character, good deeds, good actions, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. In that nothingness Prophet begin to dress from his treasure. That's why you can't go outside this ocean and think something will open to you or reality will open to you. Why well, you have a separate treasure than the treasure of Allah There's only one treasure, Khanzallah is Sayyidina Muhammad There's no treasure for you, for me. There's only one treasure for Allah given to the soul of Muhammadun Rasulullah. The more you negate the more you're taking from that treasure. Everything becomes then opposite. Anyone leaving that ocean trying to find their own treasure, they went very far from this reality. This reality is based on our nothingness, reaching through this immense ocean of muhabbat. And that's why all these knots and recitations are important. When you recite them, recite them, recite them, then you begin to understand all these haqqaiqs are in them. How then in the knot the man is asking, how I reach to this? He knows it wasn't his salah, you think your salah gave you to reach to Allah's uh, majesty? If somebody start to feel something or they feel the presence of the Divinely Presence, you think you got there because your salah was impressive to Allah or the five dollars you gave and your hands were shaking when you gave it? What, what struggle did we do that was impressive to Allah Compared to reading the story of the Sahabi on what type of battles they fought, what type of difficulties and torments they fought and never their faith changed. We didn't get here from that, we got here from muhabbat and love. That we came with love for Sayyidina Muhammad he felt pity upon us. As a result he lifted us, said, I love them back. If Prophet signs on your card that, I love you, I accept your actions of love and I love you, it's finished, everything is granted. Allah's love is already granted like a blank check. Allah's intercession is granted like a blank check and as a result these nuts came where these awliya were reciting and there were immense blessings dressed upon them, in immense realities being spoken through them. And people were astonished, let me sit with you for two weeks and see how you pray. Do you pray like on top of a, a roof of a building all night long? Do you do anything like super spectacular, amazingly miraculous? Said, no. But I sit and I have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad and that was it. Because the immensity of the power and the blessings of Prophet give to you in an instant, fill your heart beyond imagination and that's why the Burda Sharif is describing some awliya come and take a cup or a handful. Some are receiving oceans of reality from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basira surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.